Their opening statements are set to begin tomorrow in the federal case against fallen tech star Elizabeth Holmes. Holmes is facing a dozen felony charges. Allegedly, she knowingly misled investors, patients, and doctors with falsified claims about her company's blood testing technology. Court TV crime and justice reporter Matt Johnson is here, uh, and he's going to let us know all we need to know about this upcoming trial. What a story this is, Matt. Big story. It's made for a Hollywood movie. In fact, they're making two about it. Ted, good morning. She was once considered a Steve Jobs, the next one. She was very high profile. This case sending shockwaves through Silicon Valley. The trial beginning tomorrow will center around the rise and fall of Theranos technology and founder Elizabeth Holmes. She was just 19 when she founded the startup, once valued at $9 billion. Tomorrow, after months of delays due to the pandemic, the trial against the one, one of Stanford's most famous dropouts is set to begin. Two years ago, Holmes and her former boyfriend, former Therno COO Ramesh Sunny Balwani, were indicted by a grand jury on a dozen felonies. Prosecutors allege that they had defrauded investors out of hundreds of millions of dollars and knowingly misled patients and doctors with false claims over blood testing. Holmes and Balwani each face up to 20 years behind bars in federal prison and more than a half a million dollars in fines and restitution if they're convicted. No surprise, they each blame each other for the fall of the company and they're being tried separately. Holmes, of course, her trial underway. Balwani's trial is set for January of 2022, Ted. Yeah, we give them an opportunity to blame the other, which will be key for the defense here for Elizabeth Holmes. I, I, we all remember when she first broke onto the scene, and it was game-changing. It was like this t blood testing technology that was going to change the medical community, and everybody just loved her. Um, now a jury's been set, and they're ready to go in San Jose. What, what, how long is it going to take? What's the jury makeup? What can you tell us? Right. Well, there's a lot to talk about here, a lot to unpack. The trial is expected to last 13 weeks. So we're going to see another Durst-sized trial in California. It's going to last through mid-December. Here's a snapshot of the jury makeup. Let's put it on your screen. The jury is made up of 12 jurors and five alternates with seven men, five women. They're all diverse in age and ethnicity. The jury pool, get this, it started out with more than 200 people. They were all asked to fill out a 28-page questionnaire. Some of the questions, they included these. If they had watched any of the media coverage on the case, and there's a lot, their feelings on law enforcement, and if they had a history with domestic violence. That's going to be important later when we talk about defense. And if they were vaccinated. Because the judge dismissed several people, Ted, who were not vaccinated. That's a requirement for this California courtroom. Hmm. Come back to haunt in the appeal. Uh, we'll see if there is one uh, openings tomorrow. What are we expecting from uh, both sides? All right. So there's a lot here and a lot in the defense. So we know prosecutors are going to paint a picture that Holmes knew her technology didn't work. Tech that promised to run hundreds of medical tests with a single drop of blood. This case will come down to intent. Prosecutors say she misled financial backers, customers, and patients. And when journalists and regulators started to ask questions, they destroyed evidence, according to prosecutors. Prosecutors claimed that they asked for a copy of Theranos blood testing records, but they were never provided with a way to read them. And then the originals were destroyed by Holmes and Theranos, allegedly, those executives in the last few hours of business. Meanwhile, Holmes' attorneys argue that the government should have done more to preserve that exact evidence in this case. Speaking of defense, they are going to argue that Holmes did nothing wrong in this case because they say this, startups and their CEOs exaggerate technology to secure investments. And there was no intent of fraud because she believed in this technology so much. The defense may also claim that the, she was in the middle of an abusive relationship with ex-boyfriend Ramesh Sunny Balwani, who was the company COO at the time. There is newly unsealed court documents I read that claim that he dominated her. They use that word. Dominated her to a point where she was unable to make her own decisions, which is why we saw that question about domestic violence in the jury questionnaire. Ted? Yeah, very complex, and uh, it's going to be fascinating to watch play out. Part of the trial, of course, are the witnesses that are going to come in, too. They're big, uh, big brands, connected, famous people, uh, all connected to this. Yeah, like the Walmart family, the Cox family. 
Prosecutors have filed a proposed witness list of nearly 280 people in this federal case, including former patients. Some say that they were misdiagnosed with HIV. Another woman said that she was told she had a miscarriage. She didn't. And then a former Secretary of State is also on the list, and media mogul Rupert Murdoch. Wow. Uh, again, starting tomorrow uh, in San Jose, California, Silicon mm -hmm. Valley. Of course, that jury is very aware of the tech community uh, being based there in um, in the, in the Bay Area there. Matt Johnson, thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Let's uh, talk more about this with Richard St. Paul and former criminal defense attorney Lauren Prater. She's in Jacksonville, Richard in New York. Richard, a federal case, and you have, as Matt was talking about, you know, these, these two individuals that are at the center of this prosecution. One would think the feds would have been much better off having them sitting next to each other at the defense table, but they have been bifurcated. These, these are two separate trials, and this is an opportunity, is it not, for each one of them to blame the other? Correct. And that's why it's bifurcated, right? Because as the, uh, if they were tried together, then it's, it's, it's their conspiracy to commit you know, wire fraud. Wire fraud is one of the things that uh, they're being charged with, obviously having to do with uh, telling a lie and receiving money by wire, th typically through, through a bank. And that lie was that, uh, you know, our technology, uh, you can use one, uh, uh, you can prick your finger, receive uh, with one uh, sample of blood, we can diagnose you with whatever it is, HIV, whatever uh, you would normally need, you know, a tube to do. Uh, and, and telling investors that uh, this was uh, something that is revolutionizing medicine when you only needed one drop of blood to, to do a diagnosis. Obviously, that turned out to be a lie. That 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 said, you know, they're, they're pointing these fingers, and I think that's the best from a de defense perspective, right? Because you stand on your own two legs, and the case is not taking as a whole. And even better, uh, if you're, uh, you know, the second defendant up, you get to see what the prosecution is presenting in the first case. Uh, which is which is great because that helps you prepare as a defense attorney. Uh, so the, the the second defendant, uh, Botswana, I think his name is, uh, has the opportunity, has the the advantage of seeing what the prosecution is presenting in the first case. Uh, but you know, it's very interesting in this dynamic uh, that uh, you know they are pointing the fingers at each other, and that the defense uh, for the, the the former CEO, she's saying that, well, you know. It really wasn't me. I was controlled by somebody. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, dynamic as it develops, as the defense comes out with this kind of uh, psychological uh, torment uh, and control as to why she, you know she may have committed this crime. Yeah, and, and Lauren, for this jury, it's pretty obvious what happened. I mean, you look at the excitement that was generated by this company. You know, that video there. We just saw her walking around with Sanjay Gupta. You know, everybody was very excited about this. What this young woman was able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. And at some point, whether she knew it from the beginning or not, but at some point, she knew. Uh, rut row, this thing doesn't work. And um, what are we going to do about it now? And it's that, that her actions from that point on, and if she's blaming, well, my, my partner, he controlled me, I, I can't be held responsible for that. It does, like Richard said, add this whole other level of complexity for this jury to contemplate. I agree. Um, I, I know that domestic violence is something that has a, a terrible mental grip on, on its victims. So I think that if the evidence is able to support the allegations of domestic violence, then I think that that gives a stronger defense for um, the defendant in this case. However, I don't think that that is going to completely just rid her of all liability. I mean, some of the things that she got to benefit from, I mean, you're, 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 you're not going to say, oh, domestic violence um, impacted that. I mean, she, she basked in the money and the glory that that she that she was able to get from these products so i think that although it will definitely be compelling uh and it will be something that she can use as a defense i don't think that it's going to just completely give her a not guilty in this case and i think that that's gonna that's gonna be uh, an issue that the prosecution is going to harp on Mm, yeah, absolutely. We'll see it play out. Uh, federal court, so we can't show it to you uh, gavel to gavel live, but uh, we'll be updating you as it progresses through the federal system. Again, uh, openings this week in San Jose. A jury has already been seated. Up next, we'll take you through some of the 
Best moments in the state's cross-examination of Robert Durst, including what Durst told the jury about how he felt about testifying. 